<laughs> What's up, guys? There we have him, the man, <laughs> the myth, the, man? the legend. This is Steven Wonderboy Thompson. He's the greatest karate fighter in the UFC. But how does he do it? The last time I tried to use karate in a cage, it ended with three stitches. Maybe I used it wrong. To find out the answer, I decided to visit Wonderboy and ask him one simple question. How do I turn this on? So this one doesn't, this one, we have to put more batteries ah, in that okay, one. Okay. Sorry, wrong question. Here's the right one. What is your secret? And the answer will blow your mind. Pretty bit. Yes. I feel like crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and you do about 10, 10,000 of these a day. Right? Oh, at least a day. <laughs> at least, at least 10,000. Get ready for my meeting with Wonder Woman. This is my mom's office, my, my aunt's office. So we have a little break room. We come in here, we got a refrigerator. Wait, you guys do the camel belts? For our little dragons. We have uh, our little three and four year old uh, classes. We do uh, a little Look, camo belts today. This is the most American thing oh, I've yeah. ever seen. <laughs> camo belts, man. Come this way. Okay. Oh, hey, I've seen this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so this cool. is where we do our- So this is the studio. Our podcast studio. <gasps> so you should cut the light out over there. It's pretty oh, wow. sick. Okay. So this is pretty cool. Check this out. Ready? <laughs> it's the light. And, it, and even like, see how they have different noises? You should get like a close up there. Oh, he cut it off. Oh, shit. <laughs> right here. And you can go. Ah, okay. So I'm a huge anime fan, as you might know. I'm a big Spider-Man, Dragon Ball Z fan. I'm a huge car guy. This is my NMF belt that I got. Oh, the inaugural nice. nicest mofo. And after I fought Tyron the first time, um, I came back home. It was really late. It was like 10, 30, 11 o'clock, right, at night. And next thing I know, I'm being escorted down to downtown Simpsonville, and there was tons of people there, tons of people there. And I lost the fight, you know, and which it was kind of emotional for me because I had students that I taught when they were this big, and now they're there, you know, mid-20s, and they were there just, just saying hello, and they're proud of me, and I got the key to the city. Thank you. It unlocks every door in, in Simpsonville. I wish, but this is cool. This is actually the canvas of the, uh, the octagon that I fought Johnny nice. Hendricks on. Yeah, that was actually one of my most memorable moments. I won the Waco World Championships. Whoa. And the Waco World Championships is, uh, it's kind of like our kickboxing Olympics, yeah. right? I was probably 24, 25 years old maybe. It was in Zeged, Hungary. Mm. Didn't see the sun the whole time. The, the buses left the USA team every day. So we had to walk like three miles in the snow. They did not like us. But when I fought for the title, they were actually cheering for, for me, for the USA team to win. We haven't won a gold since 83, and I won it in 2005, which was pretty cool. Are those real? Yeah, these are real. Whoa. Night vision goggle. Look through these things. I don't know if you can see. So that's pretty cool. So let me take you out to, awesome. the, to the dojo, man. This is so cool. All right, here we go. This is where the magic happens. Whoa! So we have curtains that can divide each class. Okay. And right. usually from curtain two down is where I teach all my kids' classes. Okay. So oh, so you still actively oh, teach Oh yeah, kids? every day. Wow. Every day. So we have an after school program, and me, my dad, we have staff. We go pick up kids from school that are, that are in our karate program. Okay. And uh, back there through those doors, Kids can get their homework done. We have staff to help them with their homework. Uh, we feed them snack and we get them ready for their classes during the day, the kid. Wow. So do you help them with the homework as well? I don't, I don't. <laughs> Math. You never heard that. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? They are definitely smarter than I am. I can take all my kids over there to the bags and we yeah. all, and we just have fun on the yeah. bags. So yeah, they yeah. love it. Yeah. I tell them there's millions of dollars in the bags and if they break one, they need to keep all the money. <laughs> so they're sitting there hitting that bag. Like, I want to get the money. This kickboxing ring goes yeah. back Late 70s or early 80s. And if there was a tornado, I would go up, I would, I would definitely like hide under the You set. and John Jones. It's still, yeah. <laughs> yes. Dude, that's so funny, I'll, I'll man. I, true, in. true. <laughs> and I don't know why my dad insists on putting my face right there. I hate it. I don't know why. I want to take it down all the time. I do why? not want to see my face there. I don't know. It's just weird. I'm like, Dad, you got me up everywhere. Stop. 
<laughs> of course, we, we get up here. I was actually up here yesterday getting some work in. It's that, wooden things uh, over there. Oh, what are those wooden things? <laughs> those are our macueras. So oh, come on over here. Over this there. is my dad's pride and joy, okay? This is where the magic happens, right here. I love this. <laughs> This feels like I'm back in Okinawa. Oh! The birthplace of karate. Yes, baby! <laughs> this is old school. Yes. Tell that, me about it. So this area right here has got a piece of leather. This is for hardening your tools, correct? Right. So you don't want to smoke this thing. This, it's not one of these tools where you want to sit there and just really hit it hard. It's just a constant, you know, uh, banging. So I'll do, I'll do, I'll do 100, uh, my two big knuckles and 100 of my small knuckles. Mm. Um, this side here, of course, we have to sometimes lift it up and turn it around. It's a little bit more rough. You feel that? Oh, yeah, yeah. And that's kind of to condition the skin mm. of your tools. Uh, my dad will sit there and slap this thing, too. I mean, all day, just sit there and slap. <laughs> if you notice, his hands are really dense and really, really hard. Cool. He used to discipline me. I would get in trouble, and he would just take the top of his hand and slap the top of my head, <laughs> and my ears would ring, make me see stars, you know, if I, if I ever got in trouble. So this is for conditioning the skin of your shin. Yeah. So we do, we do tires. Now I make sure when I work this, I don't have any pants on. I ha well, I have <laughs> shorts on. Underwear. I'm not naked, yeah. I've, got, yeah, I've got shorts on because I want the skin to actually make contact yeah. here. So this is to condition the skin. Now, if you notice when Luke Rockhold fought Yoel Romero, it took one kick and he ended up splitting his his, uh, his skin, yeah. and he ended up getting Mercer or gangrene or something in it, and he was out for almost a year or two yep. because of that. Yep. So conditioning the skin of your, of your weapon as well is important. So um, we have kind of the same thing on this. Mm. This is a little bit more padding, but you really have to aim correctly on this because Less the worst right? thing you want to do is hit a corner. Oh, yeah. So you got to make sure it's, it's the lower part. Yeah. Um, but I'll start from the lower part all the way up to my, the knee knuckle which is the most dense of, of your shin, mm. um, and, I'll, and I'll work that. And then it's, you do the high kicks up here, right? Oh, of course, yeah. Direct, <laughs> as you can see, it's chipped off yeah, here. Yeah, I can see. You know, it's from the head, from the, <laughs> the, the conditioning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But my dad works this thing all the time. I get on here, he'll do, he'll do form, we'll do forearms. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, shins, hands, he'll do the hands, and of knuckles, of course. And I don't understand why more MMA guys aren't doing the hand conditioning. There's a lot of people, I mean, talk to Uriah Faber, for instance, he's broken his hands how many times? Pretty much almost every fight he's broken his hands. Yeah. And we literally just have a piece of leather. And even as much as I do the hand conditioning, I probably should do it more than I actually do. Yeah. But um, accidents happen. I ended up hitting with the wrong part of my hand, ended up breaking my hand when I fought Vicente Luque. Mm. But I think if it wasn't for this, it would have been a lot worse. Uh, we have these sledgehammers here for skull conditioning. What, you skull? Lay, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you lay your head down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But this is awesome. My dad, my, I agree. this is my dad's pride and joy. I love this thing. Yeah. There's a lot of guys, even at the highest level, they won't throw a punch or a kick as hard as they can for fear that they're going to injure themselves. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I Did love this. Do you use any other kind of traditional methods? I, part of my training, I mean, I, I love kata. Yeah. I think kata is a great way to train not only just your body, but your mind as well. It's mm. something that you can never get perfect, right? Yeah. Like kata, there's always something wrong with it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> always something that you can get better at. My dad's always there to, to remind me. Kata, and I didn't actually like doing kata probably up until I, uh, mid 20s, maybe. Mm. I hated kata. But then when I realized what it was good for, uh, you know, obviously helps build technique, but body awareness, because everything mm. from your toes up to your body has got to be in the right spot at the right moment. There's a lot of people out there that don't like kata and mm. think it's useless, and I think that's complete opposite. But usually you don't like something that you're not good at. Right. Right. Or understand. Yeah, exactly. Right? You know, a lot of people see this technique. When are you going to yeah. do that in karate? Well, you don't know. Yeah. The, it's the bunkai. You don't know. Yeah. The real application. But then when you're in that cage and you use it as a frame, exactly. suddenly it became useful. Yes, sir. Whoops. It's probably sweet tea. Darren, can I get you guys in a different spot so you can have different What do you yeah. want? Yeah. How do you mean? What are you guys doing? Hey, we're at the choir school. Where are you at? Yeah. Got you on speaker. We already failed. Just so it's a few moments later. Oh, what are we doing? Okay, so. <laughs> oh, okay. I only have one question. Yes. What is your secret? To my power? What is your secret for successfully using karate in MMA? 
a traditional martial art that a lot of people think is maybe useless. Yes. But you're a badass and you're winning stuff in mixed martial arts. Well, How do you make it work? Well, I'm glad that you think I'm a badass, but I don't <laughs> think so. I'm still working on that part. But, you know, and that was one of my big things about martial arts, to show everybody that karate can work in a real situation or even an MMA situation. Because in the beginning of the UFC, we were looked down upon. Yeah. And I think that might have had something to do with um, these karate McDojos mm. out there, right? Putting out black belts who shouldn't be black belts and you can get a black belt in a year kind of things, you know? But it was my goal and my dad's goal to let everybody know that, hey, karate can be used in MMA. And it's always going back to my karate roots mm. is kind of, it's my secret, to be honest mm. with you. Always training karate. I don't just train MMA. I also do my karate training as well. I feel like I should be the traditional, I wouldn't say s s savior of karate, but I want to bring karate back. I yeah. want to bring it to the limelight. Make karate cool again. Yes, yeah. make karate cool again. And it is Let's cool. Let's make those caps. Yeah, yeah, dude, make karate cool again. That's such a great idea, actually. That is mine. It's mine. Yeah, it's yours, yours. He's got a patent. It's all good. Yeah. But, you know, always keeping my, my karate training, always sticking to my roots. Mm. And, um, but there are many people who do traditional training, kung fu, wing, whatever it is, right? And they can't make it work. So how do you bridge that gap between the old and the new? It's experimenting. Mm. Um, there's a lot of things that I had to modify. Even when I went from karate to kickboxing, from kickboxing to MMA, yeah. I used my karate in both, but I had to modify things a little bit. Obviously, the you know guys trying to take me down, yeah. widening my stance up a little bit more, mm. more angle changings. So I kind of learn that experimenting, training with MMA guys. I'm getting taken down by GSP on a regular basis, so I had to change some things up with my stance. You know, normally when I would fight kickboxing, I, I stood up a little bit more yeah. upright because I didn't have to worry about the takedown. Yeah. But when I fought guys like GSP, had to widen my stance up and maybe drop my hands just a little bit more yeah. to defend the takedown and, you know, being aware of leg kicks, things like that. But um, it's experimenting, yeah. you know, using my karate, uh, and, and experimenting in live situations, or obviously in sparring. So at what point does it stop being karate? Because as you experiment, you move further and further away from the tradition. So breaking tradition. Yes. Yeah, I don't break, I try not to break tradition anyway. Okay. The, the reason for that is because, again, I'm known as a karate fighter, mm. and I want to continue that legacy, yeah. and let everybody know out there that, hey, karate works, or, if they're contemplating whether or not they should go MMA, if they're a karate guy, will karate work? I'm here to say it is. Yeah. So I think um, it's more of an emotional thing as well for me, because mm. I want to, uh, I want to stick to the roots. So I mean, a ridge hand. You know, everybody. Well, a lot of karate guys know what a ridge hand is. Yeah. You use ridge hands a lot all the time. I use it all the time. Guys take, trying to take me down. Yeah. Or when I angle off to the side, it may be a close, but you right. know, it's still a ridge hand. Yeah. You know, it's a karate technique. They don't teach that in MMA. No. You know, yeah. So um, things like traditional stances, you know, yeah. going, you know, going to back stances or even cat yeah. stances. I do that every day whenever, whenever I'm checking kicks. Yeah. I'm in a back stance. I mean, you know even your saying? side stance is right. like a classical. Karate. Like it's kind of like a <laughs> yeah. yeah, like a like a horse stance, exactly. you know. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, so the being tradition aware is there if you know what to look for. Exactly. People uh, think that the, the high block doesn't work, but there's a lot of clips of people using it like in the moment. Yeah. But if you snapshot that moment you can see it's a high block yeah i use uh something very similar to a high block but i use it to defend uh, to defend takedowns as well very right. similar i'm not going all the way up but i use it my form and my a elbow. lot of people use it from the clinch oh yeah this, right? yeah yeah 100 yeah. yeah and that's like even your hikita your withdrawing or passive passive hand right yes is now used for something yeah this guy's a genius, y'all. <laughs> a genius. I should bring you out for my next camp, for I've, sure. I've learned from a lot of great people. All I'm doing is sharing what I've learned. Well, and now I'm here to learn from you. And then I will share what I learned from you with somebody else. That sounds like a plan That's all me. I do. I love it. I love it. Well, I've always been a big fan of you just because you're, you're keeping to your traditional roots. And, I am, yeah. And I would say, you know, I, you're an idol of mine. You know, um, 
I learned a lot from just watching your channels, things that I didn't even know about okay. traditional martial arts. So really? I love watching your videos, oh, man. Oh, I really appreciate that. <laughs> Are you wow, kidding me, man? That's an honor. Dude, yeah, my dude. dad, huge fan. Really? He told me to tell you he was very sorry he wasn't able to make it. <laughs> he has to go to a funeral. Um, but um, he would love to have met you. Wow. So. Do you mind if I change to my yeah. karate uniform? Of course. Maybe Are we can just do one or two techniques. Would be awesome. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's <laughs> okay, do it. Okay, cool. Where's the changing room? Uh, come on, I'll show you. <laughs> The, the the look the look no the look but the 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 pop it gives you when you because you can get heavyweight geese but this is crisp not to mention the feel right it's the <laughs> and you gotta feel it to believe it yes sir yeah. 100%. <laughs> right. and oh no that yeah the you got pockets the pocket for the mouthpiece wow so hook me up man I'll wear that thing all the time I'll wear all it right I'm would. sending you one okay yeah. what is your view on sparring in general I love to spar yeah. I love to spar but when it comes to sparring there's a there's a right way and a wrong way to do it okay I think um, you get a lot of gyms out there that go out there they put their gear on and they try and knock each other out yeah which is not fun I've been to some gyms where I've literally had to fend for my life out there really? and it doesn't make it fun right, right? Um, we always keep it light to the head. Even here with our pros, our amateurs, we got doctors and lawyers that I train with, yeah. and they can't afford to be going back to work with black eyes and broken noses, you know, or concussions. Yeah. So we all spar the same, very, mm -hmm. very light to the head. Now, of course, if there are guys that I know that can take, you know, that are professionals, we may go a little harder to the body and legs, mm -hmm. but we always keep 100% to, to very, very light to the head. Mm -hmm. So I think training smart uh, and doing that light sparring and I wear, I wear 18 ounce gloves, I, I wear headgear, I pad from head to toe. We've had guys come in with, from other gyms just wearing gloves and no headgear, no mm. shin pads, ready to spar. And we're like, ah, no, you can't spar. So uh, you learn a lot better. You're not mm. afraid to experiment with techniques. Yeah. If you're too afraid of getting hurt or somebody knocking you out, you're not gonna throw or experiment. You're gonna think about just your yeah. you know, defending or your basic techniques, yeah. but out here we, we love creativity. So. so you use sparring as a kind of a vehicle to apply your creative instincts exactly. and to experiment like you said before. 100%, yes yeah. sir. So that's how you transition kind of from the traditional to the modern, mm. using sparring? Yes. Yeah. So could we do some of that? Sure. Okay. Let's go, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, shoot, I, I, I might be breaking a sweat. Maybe I should change. Can I change pants? <laughs> okay. Can I change ahead. pants? Let me change pants. Hold on. Here we go. <laughs> one kid was like, I like these. Where'd you get these? Dude, it's my brand. I've been telling man. you. Man. <laughs> I must these have... are like the perfect MMA gloves. Why don't you take these? Stop. Yeah, let's switch. Are you kidding yeah. me? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you see your oh, size, man. but let's These see. are like literally like gloves. Like These are perfect. So what uh -huh. we can do if you yeah. want to, um, one of my favorite techniques that we do is a jab step off, right? Okay. It's an angle changing, whatever side you want to put forward. Yeah. And we can work on... Usually I'm uh, left. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Okay. perfect. This is perfect. This is what I did against Mazadal. All right. I knocked yeah. him down with this. So what you do is when the guy throws the jab, I step and throw the jab at the same time. That's my distraction, right? I want to get you, I want to get something in your face as I step off to the side. As soon as my foot plants, I'm outside, staying away from your power hand to throw the two. Bang, boom. Oh. Just like so. And I continue to circle this way. Yeah, towards my back. Right, towards your back, knowing, okay, there's only a few things he can do. One, he can try to spin, I'm yeah. ready for that, or they'll keep trying to chase you. Yeah. And while you're still trying to chase me, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. lighting you up, right? So, well, look who's here. Pops made it. Oh, <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> I told you, yeah, we're going we're, we're to go over a, a drill that we're going to do. So if I want to, I can just go bang, boom, yeah. or I could go bang, way out ah. here, then throw the two, yeah, yeah. right? If I wanted to shallow, or I can go deep with it. Mm. Now, after we do that for a little bit, after the two, figure out what you got from there. You got a leg okay. kick, or you got a side kick. What do you have? Another right hand, or mm. you see what I'm saying? And then we move as if we're sparring. Bang, boom, yeah. Oh, ooh. And you got the leg kick there as well, too. Right. Bang, bang, oh. Boosh. Oh, oh, yes. See, that is another traditional technique my dad has been on me about throwing, not throwing, actually. The Front mighty. The, yes. Yeah. He, he's like, why don't you throw that? Why don't you do that? I'm like, <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So you have 
what is it, the, the teep, the, the, the teep, and then you have a, a traditional karate front kick. Yeah, so the you, snapping version. The snapping, yeah, yeah the snapping is, is, is the, I think it's the prettiest of all of them. Right. The snapping front kick. But you don't do it a lot. I, I need is to. Is that because of your side stance? I think so. Yeah. And I think too, guys getting a hold of it. Mm. You know, let's say if I don't hit them and they, they ended up, yeah. you know, just getting the yeah. heel. And now they got the leg or, you know, mm. they, they, they kind of go in for the leg or use it to strike. I just need to experiment more with it. Yeah. So there's always more to learn. Always. Yeah. Uh, I don't care who you are, there is always more to learn. Yeah. So going from the open stance now. You ready? Mm -hmm. So if I throw the jab, bang, Ooh. boom. Ooh. Yes. Bang. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Now when I throw that, when I, when I throw my first jab, uh-huh almost use your shoulder almost as a block, as right. a tool, correct? Mm. So if I, if I go here, ah. and you do end up, I'm kind of yeah. hiding yeah. My, my head mm. if you do throw a technique. So that would be something that's more modern. Right, we, when you're doing cotton, things like that, mm. your you're, you know, shoulder's down, obviously. Yeah. But this is kind of a more modern, like you said, using the shoulder, using every little joint to kind of hide behind. Yeah. Which more is modern. funny because if you do karate with your shoulders up, yeah, your yeah. sensei yeah. will be like that. <laughs> Shoulders, shoulders down. down. Yeah. Shoulders down. Yeah. Why, why would you think that is? I think it's because you want to connect your shoulders to your body. Because gotcha. when you elevate your shoulders, disconnected. So, th so there's no power if you punch like this. A lot of mobility though. Yes. Gotcha. But now you're using it not to attack, but to defend. Right. Which yeah. is different. Oh, yeah. That's what, that's my opinion. That like, yeah. I, 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 dude, trust me, I'm learning a lot today, okay? <laughs> learning Likewise. a lot. Do you have any specific sidekick drills? Because you're famous for your sidekick, right? Yes. Could we do one sidekick drill as well? Sure, we can yeah. do a sidekick drill. Okay. Now, one of the things that I like to do with a sidekick, number one, uh, the traditional way uh, for, for us to close the gap on a kick is this, we call it a slide up movement. Now, that's where the back foot comes up to the front or replaces the front. You get a lot of guys who go here, which I think is too big of a movement, too much of a telegraph. Yeah. So you try and hide the back foot behind your front mm. in order to do that. So I don't like to do the slide up because that's still a telegraph. Mm. So we do what we call a pulling technique mm. where you lift the leg and ah. close the gap at the same time. So that's uh, in Japanese, a kizamigeri. 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 Getty is kick, right? Yeah. Kizami is this move, a lunge. Oh, yeah. Kizami Getty. Yeah. I'm learning Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Kizami Getty. So the lifting of the leg, pushing off with the back foot. Now we'll do drills where we're just working on up and down the mat where we're just kind of going oh, to build yeah. the mechanism yeah. that launches you forward, right? So even if we're in an open stance, I, work, I can work on throwing my side kick from here mm -hmm. or stepping off and throwing the side kick. Now, the way I do my side kick, I like to bring my foot up first, mm. which is my weapon. A lot of styles go here first, yeah, and then turn. So that's the traditional way. Traditional. Yeah. So whenever I started doing kickboxing, started competing a lot, my sister Lindsay, she kicked my behind for years. Okay. She was a kicker. So every time I would lift my leg here, she would move in and jam it. Before I got the kick off, yeah. so I would get him getting jammed yeah. and fall and fall backwards. So I was like, okay, I gotta keep her from doing that to me. So what do I gotta do, right? So actually, uh, 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 Ryan Hall came up with this analogy. He said, if I had a sword in my hand yeah. and I pointed it at you, could you come forward? No, you could not come forward because you would impel yourself. Even if you do run up on me, I can still push myself away or push you away, mm -hmm. right? So, and you can get a lot of power just, just from that movement right there, that little half an inch or inch movement yeah. right there, you can get a lot of power off of it. So when I do my side kick, I bring the foot up first. Mm. That way you run into that instead of here. Yeah, it kind of looks more like a back kick almost. E exactly, yeah. it, it's almost like a, a back kick. Yeah. And I'm striking with the heel. A lot of traditional stylists, they'll go with the blade, uh, of, the foot? The blade yeah. of the foot. The blade of the foot. I, don't do a lot of conditioning on the blade of my foot. So I've kicked up many elbows and it hurt really, really bad. <laughs> I'm, I'm like limping the next day. So one of the things that we like to do as well is I like to throw the side kick when guys are coming at me, okay. right? So if you move forward, I'm stepping back and throwing my side kick, uh -huh. okay? Especially against really good aggressive guys. I, I hit Mazdudal with this actually. He came chasing me down. Yeah. We call this a clearing movement. Uh -huh. A clearing, clearing movement. So mm. not only do I want to fight going forward, 
but also want to be able to fight going backwards. And that's with all your techniques. Mm. When you're able to jab going forward, you'll be able to jab coming back. Mm. Same thing with your kicks. So we'll do drills where you come forward with the jab, and I step, boom, and I side kick. Mm. Now, when I do my side kick, obviously I can hit you with it, or I can push myself away. Right. Right. Bigger guys, I mostly push myself away. Yeah. Like if I try to say side kick Weidman, he just kind of like, Argh! I'm just like pushing myself away. So there's a great drill. Come forward, bam, just like mm. so. Now, if you notice my, in an open stance, you almost have to keep a farther distance away, right? In a closed stance, you feel like you can get a little closer, mm. right? But in an open stance, because the hand's on the same side, you automatically want to keep yeah. a farther distance. So when you spar, and you are facing off against somebody a little bit more aggressive, switch sides on them. Mm. Go open stance, that keeps them farther away. Also, everybody has kind of like a, a personal or invisible security boundary, yeah. so to speak. So if you had your hands up, anytime yeah. I got close to that security boundary, you get defensive, you start bringing your hands closer. The farther out I am, you feel a little more comfortable, those hands start to get a little more relaxed. That's when I got you. I can close that gap a lot faster with my, with my kicks, or with my punches, right? Mm. So I like to keep a little bit farther distance away. It also helps being able to see, so mm. try to see the, the takedown a little bit better. So obviously it doesn't work all the time, but we're working on that. We're working on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you can extend that security boundary, and you see it a lot in MMA, by just sticking your hand out. Mm. Don't poke your guy in the eye though. John Jones does it a lot. You see guys kind of yeah. go here. People want to stay away from the, the the closest thing to me. I will keep that same distance. If you bring your hands closer to you, or bring oh, your hands me? closer, yeah. I feel like I can get closer. Yeah. You stick your hand out, it's just the, it's just the hand that does it. Like that, mind control. Yeah, it's kind of, you're kind of pushing and pulling me in wherever you want me. Yeah. So it's that distance game. If mm. I can keep you at my distance, then I will, I will be better off. Mm. If you keep me at your striking distance, so you're playing that game, kind of when you're fighting. So the same thing in that open stance and with that side kick too. Yeah. So if, if the guy tries to come in, then I've got the boom, I got the side kick to keep him away. He's like, oh man, I don't want to take that anymore. So I'll stay away a little bit more. Mm. So you can also do the same thing when you come in, step off, and oh, I got the side kick yeah. there. Sometimes when I do a side kick um, and somebody comes in, I'm afraid he will run me over. Yes. So I fall down. Well, I turn almost like you said, like a back kick. Even if they, even if I do hit, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm in a position where ah. I can run. Yeah. Obviously, that you're in a cage, so there have been situations where yeah. I've gone boom, yeah, and yeah, I just yeah. kind of ran out of there. Yeah. So obviously, I'm keeping here. Yeah. I'm not turning completely. Right. I'm kicking, boom, and I can kind of take off and angle off if I want. Yeah. So, that 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 work work I guess experiment with that. Yes. Also throwing more than just uh, a round kick or a side kick, but you also got hook kicks. Ah. So I love, and I did this to Johnny Hendricks, I hit him with a side kick, boom. And I, he thought I was gonna hit him with a side kick again, but I, I hit him with the hook kick there. I love that. A lot of people have trouble getting power in their hook kick. Yes. How do you do it? Well, you gotta remember, the legs are a lot more powerful than your hands. So if I were to hit a bag, even at this speed, or, or hit you in the head, even at this speed, yeah. will do damage, mm. right? It will knock you out. So it doesn't, you don't need a ton of power to do damage with a kick, but you want to develop it, right? So just doing it over and over and over again will help. And I, 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 we always start off very low. So for instance, we got a bag here. Yeah. Good body positioning is important. So making sure the back foot's turned. And what I do is I like to aim low first and I'll just try, I'll hit it, but I'll kind of sink it in a little bit. I'll kind of give it a little bit more of a oomph once it hits, makes contact, yeah. which develops that, that quad and hamstring. Yeah. So I'll just sit and I'll just, boom, mm. I'll just stick. Boom. And even that to the quad, to the thigh, Ooh. does not feel good. <laughs> doesn't, you'd be limping for a while. And then obviously once you get more power, you can, you can obviously come back up. And again, this will, could, I mean, I, I'm sitting here talking about sparring lightly. Yeah. Accidents do happen. Right. We had a uh, uh, 185er. He was walking around over 200 pounds, about 215, 220, sparring one of our, our little guys. And he moved right. The guy threw a hook kick. It wasn't a hard one. Broke his orbital. Ooh. So even if you feel like you're not, it just feels like a wimpy technique in, re in, real, in, in real situation, it's going to do damage to you. Mm. 
if you aim at the right spots. Yeah. Can I try? Yeah, of course. Okay. So I start like this? I get a little bit closer too, a little bit, mm -hmm. a little bit closer, mm -hmm. just like so. And what I focus on doing is I chamber the leg yeah. and I keep it slightly bent. Mm. The farther out the leg goes, the more, the weaker it is. So I keep it a, a, fair, a pretty bent, yes. Pretty you bent. You can uh, uh, kick with your ass. Yes. <laughs> or with the kind of knee joint. Uh, that, that you can also do that as well. So mm. if I'm going leg, it's yeah. normally just the bending of the leg. Mm. But if I'm going for power, I use the, I use that the, the glute as well. The, the, the glute. The, the glute. That's a technical <laughs> term. <laughs> and then you gradually go high. Right. Okay. Gradually go high. I can already feel a cramp. <laughs> <laughs> and. I and you do about 10,000 10, of these a day, right? Oh, at least a day, <laughs> at least, at least 10,000. But that's why I favor kind of more of the sideways stance. Yeah. Um, here, it allows me to evade or go forward. It allows me to punch and allows me to kick. Cause I'm in that almost like a 50-50. More traditional or more of like a boxing or Muay Thai, they're more forward, which means if I have to kick, I have to lean back mm. to switch my weight, which, that could be a telegraph as well. Yeah. So minimizing that, that lean or that leverage of your, of your kick makes all the difference. So that's why I kind of like the 50-50 stance. Everybody's, you know, obviously you got the leg kicks and stuff you got to defend, but I can, I can strike, boom. But from here, I can also, I can also kick mm. with my lead leg. But your back leg is limited, right? Because this half of my body is now blocking this leg. Right, right. right. Unless you spin. Well, that's why whenever, I, whenever I'm fighting, we have two types of movement, right? You have your initial movement, which is the very first movement you make before you throw a technique. If I was standing in front of you and I'm dead still, any little movement that I make, you're gonna to react to it. But you can disguise that or your telegraph. You wanna limit that as much as possible, but you can limit that or disguise it with constant movement. Yeah. So if I'm constantly moving, yeah. and if this is my target, right, I can move my, maneuver my feet into position to be able to throw my back leg a lot faster. Mm. If I were to stand still and try and throw from here, it's gonna be, it's gonna be very difficult. Yeah. But if I'm moving and I'm able to put my feet in a position, now I'm able to throw that kick. Yeah. So you disguise that initial movement with constant movement. Even if I'm standing still, I'm, kind of, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm, mm. I'm bouncing, right? Yeah. So it also keeps me fast on my feet when I'm doing it. If I'm still, you know, you mm. kind of wanna sit down on that back heel, the back heel kind of sits down, you're kind of, your, your movement's a little bit slower, but if I'm bouncing, it's got that pop to be able to move or boom, to be able to throw a kick. That mm. bounce helps with my speed. Yeah. And the older you get, the more I need that bounce. The more, <laughs> the more I need as much speed as possible. Yeah. Because so, it's about relative speed, not absolute speed. Right. Mm. Yes, sir. So it's, it's, um, it's a, you know, I'm, I'm learning a ton right here just from listening to, I'm learning Japanese for, uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, this is crazy right now, but I can tell just from watching your hook kick. Now, in, traditionally, did you, do you guys throw hook kicks? You, do you all, do you... Well, yeah, I mean, usually if you compete and stuff, but they're not cool. present in uh, the old school stuff yes, from Okinawa. Yeah, more gotcha. of the modern karate. Gotcha. But I like to practice all kinds of karate. <laughs> always evolving, always getting better, baby. <laughs> yeah, that's so it. those are a few drills that we do with, yeah. the, with the striking drills, the angle changing, also doing the same movement with your kicks. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, thank you very Are much. You it's been me? a true pleasure. Pleasure honor. is all mine. Thank you for sharing your time and expertise with all of the karate nerds out there. Yes. <laughs> Guys, I'm telling you, I can't tell you how I'm, I'm, I'm fanning out right now. I'm, I'm fanboying <laughs> it right now. <laughs> fanboying this guy. Thank You're you for coming and making the trip out here to come spend some time with us. We really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Yes, sir. Wow. That was amazing. I really hope you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for watching. Train hard, good luck, and have fun.